Hey, what's up you guys? And of course, welcome to another alternative factuals video. So today I'm going to be talking about Kugali Media and their graphic novel, Nani. Kugali is actually a company dedicated to telling African narratives, which I can really get behind because if you've been watching this channel for a while, I'm very supportive of anything black, pro-black, African-American, whatever the case may be, and whatever form it may come in. Also, I'm happy to say that I'm being sponsored by these guys to help get their Kickstarter completely off the ground and help them fund this independent comic and kind of make comics much like it in the future. But also, I would like to let you guys know you can check these guys out on Twitter at Kugali Media and also on Facebook at Kugali. And uh, you can check out their website, uh, Kugali.com. Um, they have all the information, the comic books, and all the other stuff as well. And uh, I actually personally read through this. Um, I like the art style, personally, I really do. And I'm enjoying the story because this is something I'm going to actually invest my time in and stick around. You might actually see me do a couple more videos about it as the series kind of continues. But uh, before I dive into the details of this wonderful, juicy, succulent video, please be sure to like, share, and of course, subscribe. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're feeling. And without further and or do, let's kind of just dive into this. Okay, so Nani, it's actually coming from a comic book company called Kugali Media. And Kugali is just a company that is focused on telling stories that are really inspired by African culture. Uh, by doing so, they kind of use the mediums of comic books, video games, uh, augmented reality. So anything you can kind of think of that affects pop culture or kind of involves pop culture, they're pretty much covering. But remember, this is from the experience of someone who is of color, someone who is black, someone who is African-American, someone who is African. You know, any person who is black, this is kind of for us. Uh, they're telling our narratives from these perspectives and kind of getting in touch with a lot of our ancestry, a lot of our roots. And this is something I actually can get completely behind because y'all know if y'all seen enough of my videos, this is something I've been dying for because no matter what you say about DC Marvel, uh, even Image Comics, yeah, they tell their stories, yeah, they have black characters, but one of the biggest things we need to do is actually create our own characters. And this is exactly what they're doing. One thing that I kind of want to talk about when it comes to Nani and why it's technically identified as piece of representational media is one, it's centered around two uh, main characters who are black. Pretty much everyone who's in the main cast of characters in this book is black, a person of color. They look like me. They look like most of my viewers who are watching videos like this. So this is something you definitely can get into and kind of relate to. But also it centers around mostly these two sisters, but more specifically Mina. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I don't want to spoil too much of the detail of the story, but this is actually a young girl who is struggling to recover from trauma of being assaulted. And she was robbed at gunpoint and she's trying to recover. She's trying to kind of gain her power back. So she takes martial arts and she kind of does this as a way to kind of deal with that trauma, even though it's still very much lingering. But nonetheless, you can tell by her character that she has a great heart and that she wants to do the right thing. But sometimes she feels like things are just too far out of control for her to be able to do anything. And that's not something that she actually feels like is OK. So we fast forward to several years later and basically, according to the book as well, and even what I've seen, the situation kind of repeats itself where she's involved in these in this kind of kidnapping attempt and they try to abduct both her and her sister and at this point they're trying to escape the kidnappers and they kind of run into this forest now what's so cool is you're going to find out in the story that she's actually somehow tied to the place that they're transported to because it seems like she has some sort of ability but we don't know exactly what it is so you spend most of the first volume of this book trying to figure out like hey how does she get these powers how is the powers related to her uh how exactly can she use these powers and you see the situations in which her powers manifest so that's what makes this really 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 dope now one of the coolest things about this book is the fact that you can tell that there's inspiration drawn from the art style when it comes to anime um you'll see like how they draw a lot of the characters in this video and what's so cool about it is it's not completely like the anime style you can tell obviously it's not anime but you can tell it drew inspiration from anime while still having its own kind of twist to it so not only is it interesting to read because I really do want to figure out what's going on with her powers and how is it tied to this new world of Sama and how exactly she's drawing power or how her energy or how her mystical abilities work. But overall, it's just aesthetically pleasing reading this book in general. And remember, all these characters look like me and you. So even the way that they depict their skin colors, the way that they depict their hair and the way that they kind of interact with each other, they're all reflections of how me, a person of color, someone who is black, would interact with someone else 
else who is of color as well. And remember, the main characters, everyone you pretty much see in this book is black. And I'm just like, okay, this is definitely a good representation of what I actually wanted in a comic book. I don't want to feel like I'm just some added piece to a team of all white counterparts. This is really just a book about us. And it's about Africanism. It's about the ancestry. It's about the culture of being black and where we came from. And a lot of the myths and lores that are tied to the fact that we're, you know, African descents and people who are still from Africa directly so this is a book that you might want to pick up and read not just simply for the art style but also the storytelling aspect of it as well one of the things I actually really, really enjoyed about the first volume is that off the rip from the beginning, they kind of just dive straight into things. You do get a basic understanding of Mina, her dynamic with her sister, as well as the whole situation on how they got to the world of Sama in the first place. And one thing you know about me, if you've seen any of my videos, is that I really, really, really hate fluff. And that's one thing that this first volume did not do. It dove straight into what I wanted to see, as well as you kind of figure things out as you continue reading, as well as you start to ask questions by the time you get halfway through the first volume. Now, one thing I actually find really, really, really dope is the fact that you can tell that Mina and her sister are completely in sync when it comes to how they fight. Uh, they may have a, a disagreement of views at some point during the story, but ultimately they are very close. And when they fight, they have tag team specials for days. But one thing I want you to know about the comic book industry is DC and Marvel, and even to some degree, I'll say Image Comics, they have a huge stronghold on the comics game. It is very difficult for, let alone a small comic book company to even try and create something like this in general. But also, it's even harder for a small comic book company that is pretty much owned and ran by people of color in general. You already know the system is not designed for people like us, and it is not our fault. Unfortunately, that is the world we live in. But you have to understand just the fact that you want to read this comic or even buy the comic or even pre-order it or do whatever it takes to get a hand on this comic will actually help this whole situation out because not only will we kind of have more characters that tell our narratives a lot better from the perspective of us but it will also let people know that we are not how comic books portray us you know sometimes comic books don't always portray us in the best of light sometimes comic books uh, portray us as being very aggressive or maybe even extremely submissive but these are stories told from our perspective and I think that you know in reality in a world that we live in we need more things like this especially in light of movements like the Black, um, Black Lives Matter movement uh, just in retrospect to all the situations that's happened and within the last six months it is important we get more and more stories that tell our narratives that tell our culture that get in contact with our Africanism the parts of us that are from Africa even those who are my subscribers who are still you know directly from Africa in this generation we must make sure that we take the time to not only let people know about Kugali Media and let people know about Nani in the first volume, but we also have to make sure that we give companies like this an opportunity because if we're being completely honest, it's really difficult for Kugali Media to get their content out there just because of how comic books and how the comic book industry works. They go to conventions, you know, they actually try to actually go out there and get people to read their content. And especially with the difficulties of COVID-19, things have become even more difficult for a company like Kugali Media. So make sure you take the time to go to their website, go to their social media handles. Um, I mentioned them at the beginning of the video and check out their content because you will miss out on a chance to support a company that's actually telling narratives from a black person's perspective. And even if you can't put in money per se, let's say even if you can't even buy the comic book yourself, make sure you share the content with other people because I'm pretty sure there's somebody out there who are fiending to get their hands on content just like this. But also, it is important that we still talk about these things. We kind of keep in contact with these roots and we still tell our stories from our perspective because one thing we cannot count on is the media will not tell it properly especially comic book companies a lot of these dudes who are writing even you know black lightning or even um i can't say blue marvel because blue marvel was created by a black man but a lot of the people who are telling these stories involving these characters are not always people of color they're not always black they're not always someone who you can at least be sure that they're telling the story properly because they've lived that life before 
And the reason I kind of make a big deal about it is because I, I can never get enough of that. This is coming from someone who has personally had experience, you know, with you know people telling narratives based on your skin tone and not so much based on fact. And this is why you should definitely pick up a copy of this. This is telling a really great story, honestly, a dope story and great art. And it's by a company that by any day of the week, I would definitely just recommend that, hey, maybe check out some of their stuff first before you go buy something from DC or Marvel. So keep that in mind. Um, I hope that, you know, this video definitely will help you, at least when it comes to picking out more comic books uh, by independent companies, especially by Kugali Media. I think you should definitely look into what they're doing. I'm going to have all the links and stuff in the description, and I hope that you see the panels and you've seen like a lot of the visuals for this uh, particular graphic novel slash comic. But remember, so this is also a Kickstarter, meaning anyone who invests any kind of money into this second volume of Nani will actually get 40 pages of free PDF. Basically, you can enjoy it just as much as I did, as well as get a chance to know the content the way that I got a chance to get to know the content. Like I said, it's really an experience, and I think you should really take the time to check it out and really just help them create this story and continue the story so that way we can get more and more stories from companies like Kugali Media. So it's great that we get to have that experience continuing 2020, and I would highly recommend you read it. And I'm not saying that I didn't read it. I'm not trying to give you the, you know, the whole stick where it's just like, okay, yeah, just read the comic blah 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 i'm telling you i've read the comic i actually read the entire first volume it is something i think that i'm pretty much going to be covering on this channel so i still want you guys to read it i want you guys to reach out i want you guys to click the links in the description down below i want you guys to actually go check out this company and i want you to buy a lot of these comics because they are they're actually pretty solid believe it or not so i'm just going to sign off do my usual sign off please be sure to like share and of course subscribe leave your comments down below let me know what you're thinking let me know what you're feeling and peace out Thank you.